Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Decryption and I hope you are well. Narrative has officially now released Narrative version 3.1 and there are a boatload of changes in it, so let's go over them today. So the first change I will come on to is a little bit of a negative one, but due to Epic's policy, a plugin can only support the last three versions of the engine. So now officially, Narrative won't work on 4.9 Unreal. You must be on the 5 series. You can still download the plugin and try to compile it. It may very well work. You might need to change a few bits and bobs, but the chance is still there. The first feature we're going to come on to is there is now a new node called the has dialogue available node. So you can see on my dialogue trigger here, we have this new variable off of narrative called has dialogue available. It takes in all your standard classes and your avatar and your ID, and it will return a true or false whether you can actually call the dialogue. So for example, if you have a dialogue like my Nakamura sisters here, where you can't play this node if the quest is in progress, this has dialogue available node will return false knowing you can't do it. Really useful for checks if you want to do it, if you want to show exclamation points above people's heads, or when you're firing your press E to talk to them, you can check if they actually have any dialogue to talk to you with. Really, really nice. The next feature is a new method of creating tasks. You can now have non-integer based quest tasks. So just before, when you are doing your follow quests, typically you have an integer at the top of your screen saying do this many times, or you have one where you must follow an NPC around in integer based. However, now if you open up your tasks, you will have a new function called get task progress text. And with this, you can return absolutely anything you want in order to print on the screen what it does. And with this new feature, there is also a brand new task called the BPT move, which will detect how far a, a pawn has moved. So if you have a task saying move 50 meters or race to 100 meters, you can use this task. And this task has the brand new get quest progress. So you can see it prints out the float and rounds it up to say how many meters out of the current meters you have done that should make for some really good availability and that's really flexible to do anything you want the next feature we have is the success and fail states are now back into narrative and you can change the state node type at the top from a nice easy drop down making for it really easy when you need to change things but you can now also jump to specific states using two new nodes you have the get state node here under quest where you can pass in the ID, what you need of your current quest. And then from here, you can call the brand new enter state to make a quest jump to a specific state if you need to. One key example of this new enter state usability will be for failure or grand success jumps. So instead of having to drag arrows all the way over to the, the very end of it, if they do an optional quest or something like that, in the enter graph on quest started, you can simply get your player pawn, bind to the on death event dispatcher, and then call enter state to jump straight to the failed node, making it really easy to have long changes in your quest without having to mess up the actual quest graph. Along with this new enter state, you can also now use the brand new interactable state. So on your quest or your master quest or any other quest that you inherit from, in your quest class defaults, you now have this interactable states variable where you can come in and add specific states you need. And in the prime example in the description is you may have one ran out of time or on death that you want to share across many, many quests. And you can plug it all into here really easily. The next big changes for this new version are tweaks to the new UI. So the UI will look the same, but it will function completely different in the background. So before at the top, the parent class used to be narrative testing widget that was removed and now replaced with a brand new event and bind system if you want to create your own ui or if you want to move the ui around all you do now is connect to the narrative component and bind to whichever event you want so you can see i'm on the general stuff and i'm going through and all the quest npc and dialogue lines are all here just connecting to a specific event so you can see here it binds to the narrative component on dialogue begin
begin, it calls the on dialogue begin event, which is still in the same location of dialogue. And you can see now it is just a standard custom event, meaning, it, meaning it's a lot easier to bind new UI and other features to Narrative's UI system. The final new feature we'll look at is in the go to location task. We now have the option to add a new waypoint system. So you can see if I just tick this waypoint here and have some default settings for it, when the game begins, you can see I now have a marker exactly where it needs to be in order to complete the task. So you can see if I move it to somebody a bit more closer, you can see the random person is there with the timer ticking down on the waypoint. You can edit this waypoint however you want. You can even turn it off if you don't want it. Really useful for a lot of games. Now running through some bugs, when you call begin task, it now gets called on the clients as well as the server, meaning multiplayer games get a big enhancement. One other bug that has been fixed is on the description of a task. If you added any rich text at all, it wouldn't render it on the screen because it was just using a standard text box. But now you can see it renders the rich text using narrative emphasis or any other one you want really nicely. Another bug fix is the disabled style has been removed from tasks because if you did add rich text to it, unfortunately Unreal's rich text does not support nested styles. So you can't have the disabled wrapped around narrative emphasis. So it's been removed out to just be turned slightly gray use the styles built into it. The next bug was previously the IDs would change every time you change the text inside a node. This time, once it's set the dialogue once, you can see it won't set it anymore, which is good. The next fix was if you double clicked any dialogue or quest, you would get the activated or the started nodes. These previously would only ever return false. These have now been patched, so they will return true if the node has just started or false if it has ended. The next fix is the get string variable was seemingly turned the previous node that you are currently on. So you can see on here, if it had get to this testing node, it would return this node, even though it would replace the text on this node, meaning you couldn't really overwrite or do much with it. That has now been fixed to only ever return the current node when it's on. There were also some warnings in the log about narrative short names that has now been completely removed. And there was a narrative runtime message that was under the state code of warning that has also been removed. Another UI bug was if you begin a quest, the quest would fade on the screen. And then if you were to begin a quest while it was still there, it would disappear and then fade back on again. That has now been patched. There is currently only one known bug in narrative, and that is to do with the shared component. If you are not using multiplayer, it shouldn't affect you, which is easily fixed simply by converting this narrative component to a validator get and connecting it up to the then one sequence and the is valid into it. If you're not creating a multiplayer game, you won't have a narrative shared component, so it starts erroring. So you can convert it to a, an is valid node, or you can just simply drag off of it and call is valid and then plug it in like like so. And that's it, ladies and gentlemen. They are the many new features and bug fixes of Narrative. Narrative 3.1.1 will most likely fix the shared narrative components and any other bugs that pop up, but so far I've not seen any bugs with it. It's all looking very good. If you'd like to see me cover any of these new features, please let me know in the comments. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you next time.